All right, guys, so I've been on a little bit of a kick lately making these little smoking pipes. And um, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create a smocking pipe. Just a reminder, if you want to come check out some of these 3D models I've been making lately, uh, Sketchfab at the bottom of my site. We'll Sketchfab link there for you if you want to check it out. And um, these are a lot of fun to make. They don't really take too long start to finish. So that's what we're going to do, all right? Blender, go to side view. Delete the cube and uh, bring in a image reference. So snag an image offline somewhere of some kind of pipe you want to make or something. In this case, this will work for me. All right, and so uh, it's a lot of perspective to this, so we're going to try our best to get it right, but it's going to be a little bit challenging. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and push this thing back. Now, this isn't really a beginner tutorial, just so you know. I'm not going to talk about like what kind of buttons you got to use and all that fun stuff for the most part. Maybe a little bit, but for the most part, we're just going to be going over workflow. And um, I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to make this an eight-sided cylinder. Keep it simple. All right, we're going to be doing subdivision, so we don't need to have anything real fancy here, right? Go to edit mode, scale it down, Alt-Z, turn that on, right? Let's get it aligned here. So I usually um, scale in edit mode, but then I'll rotate in object mode. That's because that holds the data there, so you can use local rotations later. Um, but we're going to have to make it a little bit bigger than what we see here, just because if you subdivide, it's going to lose volume. So go loosely around the outside of this thing. Okay, this one in particular, we might get away with just using a cylinder all the way through. Um, I'll do a little reduction in here just so you can see how that works. It might be something you do on. Um, different types of little smocking pipes or whatever, but let's just go for it. I'm going to duplicate this, right? Rotate it. Scale it down right here. All right. And I'm going to bring one all the way to the back. Scale it down a little bit. So I'm going to jump up to, to the top view here and just kind of tweak it a little bit. Basically, I'm scaling on X trying doing this, right? So it's a little wider. And um, let's just do it there, actually. This here, we're going to probably have to do a little bit of custom work in here because it is, yeah, I don't think we're going to get away with that um, cylinder going all the way through. Can borrow this, rotate it, though. Just like this one over here, we'll kind of get the same angle going. Just gonna eyeball a lot of this stuff. Duplicate it, Shift D. Throw another one right here. And so this one here, I'm gonna duplicate it and separate one real quick. So I have a backup. I just want to backup. Press H. I did. We're gonna probably use it to make this section and we'll do them kind of separately, but let's get into edit mode, scale here. Okay, and so what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to grab these like this, control E and bridge edge loop, and it'll do this number. Sometimes it leaves faces in the middle, just delete them, not a big deal. And uh, it's also backwards, so if we press A, Alt N, recalculate outside, it should go the correct way now. If you have issues with that back face colon, I just turn this on and I'll never have to worry if a face is right or not. If it's not right, I'll see it. I don't have to use like color codes or change my theme or nothing like that. So it's up to you what you do realistically though. Um, Alt R here, I feel like is a good call with Machine Tools Deus Ex version. Uh, Control Shift S also. Might work quite well here, but you can see we lose a little bit of the shape. I'm trying not to lose the shape, but you can see the difference between skewing and uh, using that old R feature. I can slide it back up at an angle. I'm going to try this. I don't know what's going to happen. Take two faces, control E, bridge edge loops, add some cuts here. Play around with the um, Smoothness factor. 
Yeah, I can see that didn't work out too well. All right, so bridge edge loops. We'll do one cut, grab it, move it a little bit. We'll see what happens here. So let's subdivide this. Hit Control Two, delete that top face. All right, you can see we lost a lot of volume. Let's go ahead and under our modifier, just turn it on end result here. Go into edit mode. You'll see we can actually modify it this way as well. Yeah, we might get away with that whole thing going through. Looks like we will. Wasn't planning on that. Fortunately, it kind of makes it a little easier and um it's hoping to run into a little bit of an issue here so you guys know how to solve that kind of problems later on if you needed to i think we'll be all right i'm just going to scale that in a little bit there and i think i'm going to scale these ones in as well flatten it out a bit so s and x with the two selected not too bad Okay, so let's say this was a different pipe. A lot of times you have much more crazy stuff going on, not so curvy like this, right? Um, you might end up doing reductions. So you might not just have like one here, you might have like two additional ones or something. So if you take three of these vertices, you might merge them at the middle there. Control X like that. And um, what that'll do is do a reduction basically. So you can get more squared shapes. It's basically like doing like a quad sphere kind of here at the bottom. Kind of interesting. So I'm just going to do that kind of for demo purposes. But you can see it creates a uh, e pull. Sometimes they slice in a little too much. Could be a problem. You dissolve. When you merge those, you have one quad left like this. You dissolve that. So it's just a way you could reduce things a little bit if you need to do something um, like that in that manner. Anyways, we don't need that for this one. It's also uh, three to ones. Let's talk about that real quick. So let's control Z back before I lose all the stuff here, right? So a three to one would be something like this. If you have three edges, you want to reduce it to one. It's like a half an inset. Half of an inset, right? So you'll do this out to there. Oop, sorry. You'll do this, create a cut basically, like so. And then you go from here and you would go to here. These two would be extra at this point. You would actually dissolve these. Okay. So things like that could also work. It's kind of like doing an inset here across the middle. Um, so you might want to try that out. We don't need none of that though. But I just wanted to throw it in there so in case you needed it, you got it, right? Let's um, separate this one here at the top as well. Uh oh, Get that up. I didn't have x-ray on when I did that. I need this as a separate object. Old H, we'll bring this other one back. Like that one, join those two together. Control E, bridges, loops. Oh, that is not gonna work, is it? Not with a subdivision on it. Okay, there we go. Number of cuts. You can play with this and change the smoothness factor and see if you can get it to match up. I think we'll be all right with this one. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Sometimes that won't work. You'll have to do, you'll have to manually place them. But yeah, I think that worked for us, so. All right, keep things simple here. All I'm gonna do the other part here. What happened here? Oh, I was isolated. Okay. Keep things simple here. I'm just going to do an inset here and delete. We'll work on that later. 
put on this one as well. We'll do a um, ES. How does it feel like the portion on it was on? Right. ES, just like that. That's it. Okay. Same thing here at the top. ES. Turn off the subdivision and edit mode. That's why it seemed like the portion on it was on. So I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. I want to match that picture. I think it'll be okay like that. Okay, pull it back down. This one might even go down a little bit like that. All right, but anyways, so the thing here is ES, scale it in, bring it in. I'm going to pull it in like this. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to separate it. So we have another one. I'm going to scale that. Just scale it up a little bit. I press ES, GZ, A, Alt N, calculate outside. Like that loop again, ES. The little metal piece in the middle, right? And I'm going to press EZ here. I just want to see about what it looks like. Lined up next to each other. I don't think it's too bad. I'm going to bevel these real quick. Mouse wheel up once, right? Done. As far as that, I'm concerned with that. So, actually, going to just um, pull that down, scale it in a little bit, pull it down a little bit. Somewhere like maybe right there. And then I'll press ES, ES, merge it center, bevel, done. All right. My control three shade smooth. Control three shade smooth. I want to make sure they're lining up. Okay. This piece here, I'm just going to scale it in. Okay. I don't want it to be really anything special, just a little rim. So S, Shift Z. Pull it back out like that for now. As long as there's no gaps, there's no holes. You can see there's not. Okay, that'll work. This is fine for the most part. I think this one might be a little too thick though. Pull it in. That maybe. So maybe not perfect, but it's not too bad either, right? These might be a little thick as well. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so control three that. Shade smooth, you'll see right here. I'll do a small little bevel. Same's gonna happen on this side. Oh, what the heck? Press A and merge by distance. We might have a little issue there with doubles. All right, we did. So now that's fixed. We just bevel it real quick. Also, don't forget to add mirror modifiers and bisect it. Uh, I'll use symmetrize for mesh machine. I think it's easier, but it's personal preference, I guess. So I'm going to bring these in. And this one here, I'm probably just going to move it forward a little, like right there. I change the shape a little bit, and it has... Uh, that's not too bad. Also, this top rim... I'm going to pull it out like this just a bit as well. Oh, you know what? Before we do that. Before we do that too much anyways. You can see what's going on here. Is that the, um, the shape kind of has like a little, you know, it kind of comes up a little bit at like a taper. Do that. And then we'll bevel this outer side as well. Get that kind of result going. I don't want to lose that shape through here. Um, so I'm probably going to flatten this one out a bit by sliding it up and sliding it back down, maybe. Oop, maybe the other way. Slide it down a little and slide it back up a little. Okay. Yeah, so it maintained a little bit more of that shape this time. I 
it just flattens out um, faces wherever that loop is it's going to flatten out the uh, face there a little bit cool cool all right let's finish this thing on this side got a backwards face in there flip it real quick okay um we're gonna press e s l e okay e s skeleton something like that for this one it's pretty much straight up and down so we won't have any issues with this all a align bottom so you know what let's go the other way with that on top but you could run into issues with this. I'll leave it like that, I think. No, 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 no. I mean, it's like this. Um, sometimes, like, when you're doing the scale, it, like, you'll have to use active element, basically. So you'll switch to um, normal of an active element right here. And so you'll scale to like this active element on its y axis. You press SY0 to do something like that. If this was at an angle, it's not at an angle, so we don't have that issue, which is just fine. Uh, so we'll do an inset, we'll extrude in, turn that off in edit mode, we'll inset again, do loop cuts, done. As far as that's concerned, right there. We're going to bevel this one, bevel this one. And bevel this one a little bit tighter. There you go. So that's what we got right there. Okay. Personally, I think this one pulled forward before we bevel it. Hope to go back to global and median and all that up here. I think having a little taper to that looks a little nicer, but okay. All right. So there we go. We have a um. A smucker's pipe, right? We got it. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit and scale it out. This is gonna get beveled. But I want it to be a little softer than that, not not quite so. Not quite the way it was. Alright, so you can play around with that all you want. I'll line it up, however. Uh, what we need to do is UV map this thing. So we can just get done here. This edge, mark a seam, control E, mark seam. I'll forward slash so I can see what I'm doing. I selected one edge down there and I hold control. I can select that one, mark a seam. Not a big deal, right? This one, I might. Mark a seam here. Wasn't think I was thinking whether I should or shouldn't. I think I will. And from that seam all the way back to the back. Going right down here. All the way through. Forward slash real quick. You can see um symmetrize with mesh machine. You got to turn that off if you want that line down the middle. That thing's been messing me up a lot lately, but I guess uh, machine doesn't use it no more. So I have to live with it now, I guess, or use an older version. But whatever the case, it's not a big deal, right? All right, so take a look in here. Yeah, I'm just going to do that like that as well, all the way out to here, right there. Not even going to worry about that section. Mark a seam here. We're going to mark a seam here. This one needs a seam on the bottom. Okay, and this one is interesting. Um, we could place a seam here. Okay, but. These edges, it also helps to have a seam on them sometimes. You don't necessarily have to. You can let it stretch like crazy, but uh, if you want to get it just a little bit nicer, I guess that's what you do. But 
All right, so let's check it for UV map issues and all that fun stuff. I'll go ahead and hide the reference. There we go. Pretty much done with it at this point. So let's give a, a material. We'll change. We'll give it a base material. Uh, base color, new uh, image texture, right? And set it to V grid. Let's do 2048 by 2048. Click OK. Up here, we're going to switch it to texture. Now we can see it. Um, and then also, this will get the same material. So select this and this, and then this last. Hit Control L, link materials. Bam. Um, select it all, go into edit mode, hit A, U, unwrap. It should be good. Should be, anyways. But we'll see what happened here. Looking for any kind of like deviations or stretching, anything that looks abnormal or ridiculous. We'll do it here first, and then we'll check the UV as well. So I'll go to the UV editing window. Sometimes things don't separate or something, and it might be a little bit weird. Sometimes you have just random weird stretches that might happen. Like, something like that could be a thing. I wish we had GG to slide over here as well. It doesn't seem to do that, does it? It might be something like that, though. It might be like a slide vertex button. Is it Control Shift V, I think, or Control V? I don't know what it is. There's another button for uh, vertex slide or whatever. Anyways, I think that'll be okay. I'm not real sure why it's doing that right there, but well, it should be okay. Yeah. Little, maybe a little bit weird in here, isn't it? That's pretty stretched there, right? This shape might be better if it peels from this side, it peels apart. Oh, I completely missed a little seam section here. We don't even, we don't even do that there. Oh, okay, there we go. Got it. Yay. Figured out our issue. It was looking weird. That's why you check your UV islands too. Also, it helps to sometimes check this guy on this little display stretch thing. It really tells you what's stretching more so than others. Um, like if I turn fill holes off, you'll see nothing really helps that. But conformal seems to do pretty well here. So you might unwrap one thing with conformal. You might unwrap another thing with um, angle based. Like you can do things like that. I mean, it's not it's not unheard of. Um, I think angle based on all of it, even with the stretching, is probably our better bet right now. It's kind of a weird situation, but these little cylindrical, curvy kind of shapes. A lot of times, it's better to just you know tolerate some some stretching a little bit. So. Okay, anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm good with that. We've looked at it enough. So what I want to do is I'm going to use Packmaster real quick. Bump up the uh, margin here a little. Just going to repack it. We're looking for 70%, 0 0.7. That's good. I don't even need to wait for it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and remove this material. I don't have it there. Next time I come in. Save it. This is 04 for me. This is my fourth one I've made now. All right. Um, grab all of this, export the FBX selected object, and uh, this is pipe 04, but we're going to do, um, I like to call this my painter FBX file. So. Sometimes I'll do like low um, or high or whatever after painter. And let's go to substance painter. I'm trying to speed run this a little bit. Faster is better, right? Sometimes. These things usually take me like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but. Do new, Unreal template, select the 
model. We're going to do 1024 on this one. Compute to space per fragment. Click OK. All right. There we go. So this is only going to be made of three materials. One, two, three folders. Okay. So we got wood. Okay. I'll try to match that wood. It might be a little hard. But um, plastic, I think. And then also um, metal. Okay, so you name those folders. Let me load up that image real quick. So we can see probably metal in here, wood here. That's probably actually plastic, to be honest. But um, that's plastic as well. So let's do the wood first. I'm going to use material. You can use whatever kind of wood you want. I'm going to use this um, rough one real quick. See what we get out of it. Strangely, I kind of like that. I think that's a good, good setup there. Um, so in substance, you can color sample from images. I have two monitors, so uh, I'm going to go to the other monitor, but grab the color sampler and you can sample from a picture. So you find kind of like the, um, maybe not middle kind of tones, like brightnesses, but like the um, a little bit brighter than that, maybe. Do some color samples and get an idea of what you might want to use anyways kind of like this darker setup though to be honest all right so we'll mix it up here though actually let me use this one okay so like a, a nice cherry kind of red thing going on there um so we got that this is why i did it like this because i want a fill layer above it I'm going to turn all of this off except roughness. We're going to leave roughness on and color. Color, we're going to add a grunge of some sort. I don't know which one I'm going to use, but I'm going to use one of these. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, something like that maybe. Kind of like a marble effect almost. Change the scale maybe. Make it a little larger. Probably the wrong way to do it. Didn't teach you bad things, but um, a lot of times you can change scale here somewhere with a, a parameter, but you can get away with this sometimes. You don't do it too much. Also, um, got seams in it. Change it to tri planner to see if that works out a little bit better. Um, this one also should have a seam in it. Change it to tri planner for this particular shape. This is your best bet, unless you want to go around clone stamp and stuff, which I don't really want to do. So, all right, and so we got that. This one here, I'm going to go ahead and mouse wheel through this so we get the, the two mixing. You see, this is see how close these are now, very similar. Right? Almost the same kind of a pattern. Maybe this is a little bit softer. But um, not too far off. I wonder if I can... No, I can't reduce the contrast. So we'll have to live with it or something over here with a filter or something. But I think that's fun. I'm just going to make it less. A little bit less. Uh, so it's not pure black. We'll do like 90. Okay. I think that'll work. Uh, the wood rough, we're going to try to turn the height down. Yeah, I think we'll turn the height all the way down, actually. Normal intensity, I think, has the scratches on it, but could be wrong. Anyways, so, oh, we can adjust roughness here. I wasn't sure if we could or couldn't. Anyways, this is superseding it now, so we'll just use the roughness over here. But you can see I can make it. Fairly glossy if I wanted to. Right? So, that's not too bad. I think I, I'm close to the reflection of what it has in the picture. Okay, that's good. It's actually really glossy, so we'll fix that later. All right. 
This here, this whole group that we just did, the wood, add a black mask. This mask selected the fill tool, select by object, fill here. That's it. That's all you do. And that's that's done that one for now. Um, plastic here, we're going to use plastic gloss, toss it in there. We're going to make it dark. Not pure black, just somewhere dark gray. Right? And you can give it a little bit more roughness, maybe. Uh, the whole group here, it should be in the folder. Add a black mask. Same process. Fill. Done. And now we need the, um, the metal here. I'm going to actually use a smart material. We're going to use... Uh, steel of some sort this one was the one i was using last time so we'll use that steel painted okay oh it didn't load up right that's not correct let's delete it real quick let's try that again load it up in there hmm okay I've had that happen before. It's kind of weird, huh? Steel gun mat. Let's do that. See how that works out. Hey, it's not too bad, is it? I've used this one, I think, on one of them. And so let's add a black mask. Build tool. And click. Boom. Done. All right. So pretty clean. You could do another folder on top. A lot of times I don't even bother. I just do whatever I want, which is in this case is going to be, we're going to grab the, um, the mortar wall texture here, wherever it is. Type it in mortar wall. I'm going to drag it on top. Okay. So this one, I like to do a smart mask with it. And I usually just do cavity rust or dirt cavities or dust occlusion, something. One of these. Play around with it. See what you like. I'm going to use... um. Rust actually on this one. I'll change that balance around. I don't want to get too carried away with this. Oh, you see how it's not blending well? We have to bake this. But uh, edit bake mesh maps up here. I'm going to set it to uh, 2048. And use low poly as a high poly mesh. Okay, and for the most part, you don't really have to do anything else. Except anti-aliasing, I'm going to turn on times and bake. Okay. That's so we get our curvature and ambient occlusion and all that fun stuff. And that'll take care of that mortar wall section there. That smart mask. Might take just a second for that ambient occlusion, I guess. Um, if you bake at low res and you texture at low res, when you save your substance file, it's going to become a lot lower in file size. If you um, bake high res and work at high res, your, your file size is going to be a lot larger, basically. So, if you ever wondered how to store these substance files a little bit more purposefully, just reduce things before you. I work at low res now and I actually export a high res later, but you might have to bake the high res for the, um, the bake rate. But it saves you a lot of disk space, which is nice. So um, this will be done here hopefully soon. It's kind of going slow, huh? Dragging along. So the idea is with the mortar wall, we're going to just add a little bit of kind of grunginess to it. That's all we're doing. We're going to do one more um, layer. It's going to be for roughness. I personally don't like super smooth, glossy stuff that's perfect all the time. I like to add like little fingerprints or something else. And uh, a lot of times I hand paint them in, but we're just going to use a basically a procedural texture. So, see here, that looks a little more believable in my opinion. And let's just change the balance here. See how you can get just a little, little extra stuff there. Kind of nice. I like that. Okay. And um, maybe a little bit more. I want to see just a little bit in this too. Okay, so we're not going to use that color, obviously. 
I'm just going to turn it a little bit darker and desaturate it. All right, not perfectly dark, but just something like that. Cool, cool. All right, let's do this fill layer under here. This one, we're just using uh, roughness. We're going to use a procedural, if I can find it. It has fingerprints everywhere. Or you could try something like that, maybe like it was a wet one, leaking, or, or maybe even something like that. Water droplets. Okay, I guess I'm not going to find it. So what we're going to do is whatever stands out to me, we're going to use it. I will use that, whatever that is. Look like somebody wiped it off or something. Okay. Um, so that's going to influence the roughness now, right? Kind of hard to see it, but it should be on there right now. Okay. If you change the balance, you see how it affects it, right? I don't want to get too carried away with this thing. Just want a little bit of an effect of it. You see, it's kind of doing a little extra here, I think. Sometimes you can get bad results out of this. So we're going to change to roughness and we're going to drop it down right here, maybe. So it's barely visible, perhaps. Maybe I'll change the texture. I like these little harsh spots everywhere like that. And a little more subtle of an effect, so yeah, we'll change it. Oh look, fingerprints. Ah, yeah, let's use that. The one I was looking for. There we go. A lot simpler this time, right? You can blend these as well. So like if you wanted to do like a multiply or something or an overlay, like you could do that. It's not a big deal. Okay, so it stays pretty smooth. I think I'll just leave it as normal. Leave that blend something real low. All right, so that's for the most part it. This default material thing up here, let's change this. Double click on it, you should be able to rename it. I'm gonna call this one pipe 04 because that's what this is. I'm gonna save this file real quick. All right. And we're going to export textures, output templates, PBR metallic roughness. I want to point something out here. I change it to be only the texture set. Okay. That's what I'm doing now anyways. And um, I added normal DX and normal GL. So we're using OpenGL and normal DirectX for just an RGB. I set them to PNG 16-bit, but you use whatever you want. And um, that's it. All right. So we we'll use the output template. We just do PBR metallic roughness. That's simple. Um, I'm going to go to the desktop, create a textures folder. Select that folder. Use the template based on output template, based on output, or based on texture set size. So right now I'm at 1024, which is fine. It'll happen very fast, at least this way. Export. Save settings, save the file, go back to Blender, grab this, create a new material, go to shading. With the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, grab this, Control shift t find your textures. We're only going to use base color, metallic, normal GL, and roughness. Okay, not using height, normal DX. Bring that in. Just like that, we have that in. Okay, um, and we can go ahead and take these and select 
this one, this one, then this one. Control L, link material. Boom. Okay. Looks a little bit weird, perhaps. Well, this is because we're using texture here still. So go back to material. You'll see this is solid shade. Um, but if we press Z, we can go to material preview. And now we're looking at it in um, Eevee. So if you want to use Eevee to render, you can use Eevee. No problem. Okay. And what we can also do is change our environment here a little bit. I'm going to use this one real quick. This little, like, force-looking scene. So I have an add-on where you hit Control-Alt and click called uh, Rotate HDRI. It's on the website, so if you want to check it out, um, it can be quite useful. Instead of coming up here to do it every time, right? So it behaves like substance, basically. All right, I don't really care for that light setup. I thought it would be cooler than that, but I'll try a different one. Video light? No. Let's do something like foresty look. Out in the woods or something. And it's too green. What did I expect out in the woods? Indoor, for the most part. Probably wouldn't hurt either. But I don't look too bad. What else we got? Got this night nighttime one, which is rather interesting. That's from Pixar. Got that from them, but they have a few free HDR environments. They're not most of them. I don't think are that great, but some of them are pretty interesting. Anyways, all right. I guess we'll go with this. I kind of like this, like backlighting going or whatever. Nah, it looks too CG. Let's not do that. Hmm, I can't find one I like. Just click through some that I don't normally use. Okay. Some of the ones I don't normally use, I guess. All right, I can go with that. That's not too bad. Cool. All right, so we turn off everything. My render settings are, it's a 4K. I set it up for 4K. All right. We're going to be using viewport 16 here. Not a big deal. And so... What's going to happen is basically, oh, by the way, uh, under EV, um, usually these are off by default. If you just turn on um, screen space, motion blur doesn't really matter, but ambient occlusion and bloom. Um, I turn bloom down personally. I think it's usually too strong by default, so turn it down. Uh, ambient occlusion, on the other hand, I have it set too low, I think. I like to turn it up a little bit. Like usually two or three, three usually are more dramatic, but um, and then the scale or the distance, I usually like to create like a false shadow almost, like false shading. Uh, but that doesn't work in real time, so if you're doing like an animation, you don't want to do that probably. Anyways, works good for a single uh, still render though. Um, last but not least, also. Color management, by default, there's no look to it, which is good. There's not, nothing wrong with that. But you could try something like high contrast even if you want to play around with stuff like that or play with the uh, exposure and gamma values. Other than that, I'm just going to save this scene now. Make sure um, I'm just going to replace what was there. But um, when you frame this up just right, okay? Gonna happen here is you can do a viewport render instead of using F12 and setting up a camera. The um, exposure might be a little weird sometimes, depends on what you're rendering. But a lot of times it's it's like a simple, fast way to get a cool shot of what you're working on. So this is at 4K too, which is nice. So it's not like a screen grab, but there is a little bit of aliasing and stuff in it that maybe you don't want or something like that. So. But um, either way, there you go. You now know how to make a very simple um, pipe, right? Not too hard, huh? A little bit of steps, but once you get used to doing this, it speeds up, I guess.
a lot of simple props like this shouldn't even take you, but you know, 